today we are doing part two of my dream van floor installation here at Van Life Tech. But first, let's get you a little caught up on part one. Today we're ripping out all of the work I did on days two to four and trashing the floor I built, or at least as much of it as I can peel off the floor, which I know sounds a little crazy, but we are upgrading to something a thousand times better and installing a Van Life Tech Radiant Hydronic heated floor. Usually this would go directly onto the metal, but my old supports were already permanently attached, so my install got a little unique and funky. Living in my van in negative 20 last winter taught me how important a high quality heating system is, and my old van's Wabasto heater had a heating capacity of 7,000 BTUs, but the Van Life Tech system is three times that at 23,000 BTUs, and that's just the fan coil. It's a two-stage system with radiant flooring and a fan coil unit. So unlike other systems, you don't have to wait for the floor to get a temperature to be warm. I got their Roman holiday kit, so it'll be heating not only my floors and my air, but also my water. This was a two-part install, and part one was basically like a giant puzzle. Then I wrapped the tubing between those pieces. Another reason I chose the Van Life Tech system is that it has 40% more tubing than any other system on the market. All right, and that wraps up part one of the install. In part two, we'll be installing the boiler, the fan coils, and the heart of the system. Troy Holland, I'm the founder and owner of Van Life Tech. When we got into vans, I don't even know, maybe 15 or 20 years ago, um, I was working as an engineer at Intel at that time, and my background prior to that is I was a licensed mechanical and a licensed general contractor. So what are we doing today? What is What are we starting with? Um, I'm preparing the mechanical parts that are gonna go in. You've already done a fantastic job on installing your, your radiant floor, so. Thank you. That's our-, our <laughs> Hired, right? Already. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're, <laughs> I work here now. You're trained now, exactly. <laughs> no. I'm having what we call a fitting party. Uh, fitting party means that, you know, we do have fittings that we're preparing um, that are just easier to prepare and, and put together outside the van. We ship complete kits that include all the fittings, um, all the fasteners, all the adhesives, all the pipe, all the stuff. One of the reasons a lot of the outfitters prefer that we leave it loose is that you can configure that to any installation. What level of DIYer do you think this kind of kit is for? Oh, that's a great question. We've taken a lot of the hard part out of it. We offer like fully pre-wired wiring harnesses now where they're just, they're plug and play. So something that used to take a four hour project to wire it is now literally four butt splices and all push to connect connectors. So that, you know, we take time to put that together ahead of time. So that really helps. That was probably the hardest part. And then the next hardest part would be what I'm doing right now, which is the plumbing fittings. And the question that I've always used to kind of qualify people would be like, if, hey, if you were gonna take out your 40 gallon water tank at your house and like go put in an on-demand system instead of a tank system, like at your house and you'd be comfortable like doing that, you can handle any of this plumbing stuff. A lot of people though, if they're gonna do their water system plumbing, you know, this is this is the same. We use commercial PEX fittings, um, both Crimp Connect and Shark Bike fittings, and that's mostly due to my background in mechanical systems. I think what I'm most excited for besides, you know, of course not freezing, sleeping on the floor anymore, is my cat to sleep on the floor, and I just know she's gonna love how warm it is. Though maybe, maybe, maybe this is a bad idea. I'm gonna end up jealous of the floor. Tear it all out. This is my worst nightmare. <laughs> all right, so where are we Where are we starting today? Working on, I don't know what I would call like step three. We left that off on a pressure test here, so we know that that installation is good. And then yesterday we also did the fuel tank tapping, the fuel pump, um, the heater installation, the exhaust muffler, all that stuff on the outside. And so that boiler installation uh, it's complete on the outside already and we're getting ready for part three which is the inside mechanicals that make it all work so um, this is what we call our phase one uh, pre-wire kit so this is the system power that powers the whole heating system that includes um, you know all, all the parts of it that controls the fan coil the pumps the heater outside the boiler um, controls all of it so this is set up as a two wire system that's going to run from your battery location to your mechanicals location. Um, we have that set up though, that just like in your installation here, you don't have a power system yet. But the way that this ships from us is it's already pre-terminated with two terminals. So as we get your system online, we're gonna be able to just take a shop battery, connect it right here to positive and negative. We're already pre-fused and protected for everything in the system. And we're gonna be able to turn on and run your system right from here. And how much power does your system draw? About 50 watts, steady state, and that includes pumps, fan coil, and the boiler when it's running. Uh, we're at about four or five amps. That's about 50 watts. It's about half of most fridges. Keep in mind it's a heating system though. So also like a fridge, it's not on all the time. So that's an intermittent 
50 watts. Our system runs with about a 50% duty cycle. So what that means is, is that in 24 hours, your system's gonna be on 10 or 12 of those hours. Not, not continuous, but as it turns on and off, right? And in that time, you're gonna use about a half a gallon of fuel in 24 hours, and you're gonna have used um, 50 watts whenever it's on. So what is that, 500 watt hours, roughly? We are the only system that uses what's called a control, uh, closed loop control, which means you have feedback in your control loop. So our floor has uh, an electronic temperature sensor in it, and our system gives you one degree Fahrenheit control over the floor temperature. So by default, we set it up to have about a 92 degree maximum that the floor will, will hit. And I guess along with that, we're the only ones that truly stage the, the floor heating. So we use the floor as much as possible as the first stage that's electronically controlled. And then we only bring on the fan coil the second stage when needed. So they're, they're independent but connected and functions of each other. And so the floor gets warm, but does, does it ever actually get like hot to the touch where you're walking on it? Or is it just like a comfortable... Not, not hot, but like uh, it's funny in vans, um, I like to feel it warm. We used to have a little dog that it was a tiny little lap dog and she always would want to be in your lap unless she was in the van, she'd want to be on the floor because <laughs> it was super warm. So, I mean, at 92, you're going you're gonna to feel it. it's going to be warm, right? But that's really nice. You, you swing out of bed in the morning, it's zero degrees outside and your feet hit a 90 degree floor. Um, that's a pretty nice way to wake up. Yeah, an app, is there a controller? How do you control it? Yeah, so the, the user interface is basically a touchscreen control, um, and we've purposefully done that to keep it super simple. I mean, the control can get deep country in the installer settings, but the user control is literally on-off, and then there's two arrows up or down for temperature. Okay, but that gives you your floor temperature reading, it gives you your air temperature reading, and we also in our system have an outdoor temperature sensor, and so our controls use all three of those temperatures to provide whatever the set point is. So how long does it take for the van to warm up once you turn the system on? It's, if it's just a hot water generation cycle, you're going to press your button for hot water. In 60 to 90 seconds, you're going to have um, unlimited on-demand hot water from our tankless system. If the, if the heating system is coming online and the floor is cold, like the van's been not used, it's not been on, it's going to take it a few hours to come up to temperature. Uh, that's, that's a good thing. Like The whole idea with Radiant is you're storing heat in a mass. So the longer it takes to warm up, also the longer it takes to cool off. Okay, so the reason that we have a true two-stage system is that while that floor is coming up to temperature, um, in one to two minutes, your fan coil is going to come on and provide hot air. Basically, the, the fan coil gives you rapid response, and the radiant floor gives you that nice, even heat that's part of everything in your van. You know, the floor, your cabinets, your bench, everything gets warm in here. Uh, and then once it's up to temperature, it doesn't take much energy just to pulse that floor and keep it the right temperature. Okay, which again is where our controls come in, and that's what we're doing right here is putting in the floor temperature sensor uh, so that the floor temperature can be maintained. So what I've done here is I've marked a spot that's always going to be in the walkable area of the van because I am going to take this wiring outside and hook it up to the rest of our wiring that comes in our floor transfer plate. So I'm going to drill the pilot hole. So there's a lot of misunderstood pieces or common misconceptions with heated flooring. I guess there's a lot of people jumping on the radiant floor heating bandwagon. And I, to me, there's a big difference between floor heating and floor warming. Basically any of the systems that are using an electric mat, you know, those electric mats are designed to go into like um, under tile in a bathroom and you have unlimited supply from the grid of electricity to warm them up, right? You've got a lot of the people um, getting some tubing in the floor um, our system has about 40% more tubing in the floor than anything else on the market. And additionally, our system is the only system that has an insulation. Um, we have uh, 18 millimeters of insulation as part of our floor system. If you don't have insulation and a radiant barrier and the idea to get the heat going the right way, it's gonna always go path of least resistance, which is gonna be out the bottom of the van. It's metal, it's a huge conductive piece.
Wiring used to be the hardest part. And honestly, if you if you do an S-bar system or a, a Vasto system or any heater system really that um, you just get the factory wiring harness, it is, it's kind of a nightmare. Because what they do is, from a manufacturing standpoint, they ship one harness that covers all their heaters. So air heaters, water heaters, tons of different models. But if you don't know that, like you got all these wires in the harness that you don't know what to do with, it's not clear in the documentation. So we, we fix all of that and our system is, it's fully pre-wired um, through our floor transfer plate to just be plug and play on the heater down below. And then as we're getting ready to hook this up here, everything in our system is already pre-wired. So, you know, again, you've got the automotive harness and then everything here is pre-terminated plug and play connectors. And you can see we've got this pretty small, but uh, we did this low and wide a little bit for fitting under your bench. And then um, it can also grow tall. It can also have a lot of different configurations, but essentially about a 14 by 14 by 17 inch area is, is what you should plan for, for um, the mechanicals part. Well, the other thing that um, our system accommodates is with our, the way that our plank system goes together on all Cardera floor with our universal corners, we can actually accommodate things like extra row seating, a recessed shower pan, a trunk in the pan, and like none of that is a custom floor plan for us. You can actually make those tubing layout changes on the fly during installation. Our core kit accommodates all of that. We are getting ready to uh, do what we call the fill and purge on this system. So we do have what's called a forced system fill. That means we use a bucket pump. I've already pre-mixed our 50-50 um, glycol and distilled water in this bucket along with my fill pump. Basically what we're going to do right here is I'm going to close this valve so that when I charge the system it cannot go into the tank. And what we mean by fill and purge is as I pump the glycol in it's going to purge the air from the entire system. So we have a couple of key valves that are in the system for that purpose. I'm going to close this valve going into the tank. So as I fill, it's going to have to go down. It's going to go outside. It's going to fill um, my boiler, come back up through my boiler, come through my fan coil, um, go through here, and then this is going to force all the water, all the air out of the floor because it can't go past this valve. It's going to come back from there and it's going to come into our expansion tank. So I'm venting all the air out the top of our expansion tank the lid is off and i'm going to just start that fill process here is the enemy in a hydronic system this ensures that we're purging all of the air out of the system and the system at that point will run almost silently now what's happened is i'm starting to get fluid in the tank so i'm just going to break this valve and this valve to clear the air out of those two things i go ahead and keep filling this tank until i get up to about seven eighths full so Now I'm going to open these valves that I'm done with my fill and purge. I'm not going to touch those valves again unless I'm doing system service. Okay, so I've just applied power. We've already charged the system. I'm going to go into settings, setup. This is a really nice uh, feature we have built in where it's a one touch away mode. Like let's say you're going to the airport, you're going to be gone for you know a week or something. You don't want your van to freeze, but you don't want to take time to like set everything. You just need to hit away mode and all these settings are already in here and you can be off and running. If you're connected to internet, um, you can actually even do it from the plane. I'm going to go ahead and for the defaults, I'm going to turn my early start off. I'm going to turn my schedule off. Uh, for both Android and Apple, we have an app on the App Store. You can control the system remotely from anywhere. We do give you a battery operated carbon monoxide alarm. It's peace of mind um, because even though we have probably the safest system on the market because the boiler is physically outside, like under the van. And then we, we have a double sealed penetration. It's sealed with the floor plate on the top and it's sealed with um, the impermeable uh, duct seal on the bottom. So even though that's a fully sealed connection outside, I still 
and we include with our kiddo carbon monoxide alarm because, you know, carbon monoxide, uh, odorless, tasteless gas, and you just don't wake up if you're sleeping, right? So I always recommend that you install these at head height. Like, so if this is your bed, I put it at like head height. Is it more likely to get that if you were to have like a Wabasto or Chinese diesel heater in your van? Yeah, I mean, if you think about the air heaters that everybody puts in under the seat, mm -hmm. the burner chamber for that is literally inside your van. So you've got the, the unit and there's fire happening in the firebox and there's air passing over that. It's an air to air heat exchanger. The flames are on the inside, the air is on the outside. If there was ever a crack in that, you're like literally putting those fumes directly into your living space. And then there's also the possibility of those exhaust terminations not being sealed going outside. And that's where you would more than likely get it. Um, it's not common for a heat exchanger to crack, but it could happen. Another thing I know that I remember researching about with my last system, like the Wabastos have a thing with altitude problems. Does this have anything with altitude that you should be aware of or anything like that? So our systems have automatic high altitude compensation built in. Uh, we've, I think we have 12, 13,000 feet in Colorado. That's where we've tested that up to physically in our vans. You just asked me to do a little catch up of where we're at. Uh, we've just filled a fired and commissioned the system. So first time it's turned on and we are basically the floor right now. When we turned it on, the floor was 64. Uh, it's been on for about five minutes. The floor is already coming up to 65. Uh, basically, there's a big mass in the floor and it's gonna take it time to come up to temperature. So that's why we have it staged as a two-stage system where as the floor is coming up to temperature, this fan coil kicked on and it is just pumping out heat in here um, while that floor is coming up to temperature. Once the floor is up to temperature, the system will continue to modulate that floor to keep it up to temperature and use it as the primary and then it'll only bring these fans on as needed. Uh, right now we're running the system uh, just from a shop battery. You can fully install this. You can land it on a shop battery and you can even use it right now be, like to heat your van while you're doing the rest of the van build. And you're saying that how many BTUs come out? That's like three times as much as my last one? Oh yeah, so an air heater, like the typical Webasto or Espar that people put under the seat, those are a two kilowatt air heater, which is, if you do the conversion, it's about 7,000 BTUs. Um, in our systems, we're using either a 17 or a 23,000 BTU boiler, and our fan coils put out 20,000 BTUs. Our floor system, um, with the tubing layout we have, does about 135 BTUs a square foot, or between seven and 8,000 BTUs out of the floor. Whenever I touch this, I'm like, <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, so we just, we just turned this on, right? Uh, so the floor, the floor is up to 80. I'm not going to make a bed, I'm going to start sleeping on the floor. <laughs> it's 69 degrees in here with the doors open and no insulation, and your floor is already up to 80. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. So. <laughs> pretty toasty, pretty toasty. And I think the shop's like 50 or something. Oh, it's, so. I've been shivering all day, so <laughs> I'm very happy. <laughs> Definitely a huge difference, and I, actually I really remember thinking like three days ago when I was 19 degrees sleeping on the floor being realizing like is this possibly the most important part of your van build? Yeah, I really do believe it is what makes the biggest difference um, in the comfort level in your van. Yeah, absolutely.